Hey babe, I Hi. found a good spot up here. Oh good, that's great news. Oh and I see you walking. You can see me now? Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it opens up a little bit. We just, yeah, keep, keep driving this way. So we made it through the worst. Yeah, we made it through, and there's a decent little spot up there. It's pretty busy here. It's you know it's Friday, so it's one of those rules that we got to live by that we shouldn't show up on Fridays, but we did. All right, well that's good news. When I was only 17, I took a can of gasoline and poured it out in between all this pain and suffering. Tight squeeze. We got a big rig. It's not like the van. Try not to get too many Arizona pinstripes down everything either. Welcome to today's video. We are going to do something hopefully very fun this week, and we are going to go boondocking right outside of a place we've never been. Organ Pipe Cactus National Park. National Monument. Ugh, messed it up. Organ Pipe Cactus National Monument is such a unique place. We've never been there before. I've seen a ton of pictures, but supposedly this is the only place in the United States where these organ pipe cactuses grow wild. And I'm pretty excited to see them. You all know how much I love cacti. You love cacti, okay. Fun facts. Fact number one, organ pipe cactuses only grow in that area. Mm -hmm. So if you ever see an organ pipe cactus somewhere else, that means it's been transplanted and sold as some sort of a landscaping piece. I also read that they can be 150 years old and they don't flower until they're 35 years old. And did you know that when they do flower, they only flower at night and the flowers come back in before the sun rises. Isn't that like the opposite of how most plants flower? I have like, so many questions. Don't they flower during the day? Oh, they must get pollinated by something at night. And we are finally done with our few obligations that we had early in January. So the Escapers Bash in Lake Havasu was very fun. Chris did some great presentations. We met a lot of people, had a lot of fun there. And then of course, Quartzsite had its big annual tent show. So we stopped by there for just a couple days. It was fun to see it. It was really busy and really, really happened in this year. It was really exciting because it was banging. It was the first time since pre-COVID that the big tent show felt like pre-COVID. It was back to its original attendance. Mm -hmm. The desert boondocking outside of Quartzsite was packed. It was, it was so packed. Crazy packed. So, but still easy to find a spot. Yeah. So we uh, went to Yuma and just hit up a little RV park for a few days and just kind of recouped, did laundry. We and did a lot of laundry. Three weeks worth of laundry. Mm -hmm. And we did a little upgrade on our water system. Yeah, we're trying out the new triple filter clear source ultra and we're trying to get rid of our Berkey off the countertop because we've had this Berkey for years now yeah. and we all know how much counter space we have in RVs. And nothing wrong with the Berkey. I know a lot of people love the Berkey. We love the Berkey. We loved having it when we had mm -hmm. it. But it's now, a great, quick, easy solution. No, I think I'm just I'm just excited to have something that's um, that we don't need to move in and out of our counter every time. Mm -hmm. So hopefully this works out great. Yes. So we're about 100 miles from our destination, an hour and 45 minutes away. There's a couple uh, boondocking spots that we checked out on Campendium that we've never been to. They look really good, good reviews. Uh, you know, desert boondocking is usually nice and easy as long as you stay out of the washes and um, you know, out of like the small areas, but most desert boondocking is, is pretty simple, pretty big rig friendly. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna go check out a few spots and see what we can call home. Yes. In the morning when I get up, I wish that we could stop and take each day. In the evening when I get home, I always hope to find you all alone and now of harm's way Every time I look around I hope to find you looking back at me You're everything 
thing I ever hoped to see. So it's about 80 miles to uh, entry to Mexico, where a lot of people go to get into Puerto Penasco, which is something that we were gonna do this year. We were gonna venture into Mexico and, and camp for a month, but instead we're just gonna camp on the Arizona side. Pretty close. Yeah, it's been fun watching our friends' pictures already. They went out to like some nice dinners on a patio and it made me think, oh, that could have been us with them. But as we head south, you can already tell it's starting to get more lush vegetation and uh, it just kind of gives you that more feeling of remoteness, which is kind of what we're going for right now. I see a lot of RVs out here. Yeah, so a lot of RVs. Oh, they got some big rain here recently. Here. Yeah, no idea which way to go. No idea which way I'm going. 14 day camping limit. Yeah, not bad. You wanna hang a left or a right? Um, I'm feeling left. Are you? Are you feeling right? I'm kind of feeling right on the outskirts. Yeah, I just it gets a little narrow up here, so. I think that's probably why I was drawn yeah. left. Okay, well maybe, maybe we do wanna go left. I'm not sure, let's kinda take a peek around. Tight squeeze. It's really tight back here. We maybe shouldn't have taken this turn. These are like super kind of spines on them and uh, are gonna scratch pretty bad. And it's just a tight turn around here. These things are vicious. Tight, tight, tight. Yeah, these are, uh, hi Louis. Maybe, are, maybe we should have gone left. Yeah, we should have gone left. The main road is left. I just wanted to stay to the right so that we could um, hopefully find a spot to, you know, go off. For sure. Get on the outside. Uh, but yeah, let's keep going. But we made it. <laughs> well, not yet, but pretty, we made it out of the bushes. We made it out of the bushes. Yeah, without any scratches. That was really bad. Yeah, right before that white class C, you'll see a nice little loop around and then we can back into those little cactus bush there. Gives us a little bit of privacy. Okay, so right? Yeah, right, and then and then you'll loop here on the left. Sweet home. Good boy, okay. It's a big jump down, isn't it? You can jump up, but you can't jump down yet. Okay. Should we go check it out, Luis? Should we check out your new yard? So, not a bad spot. It's not the most private, but we at least have a, a private little patio. And the sun sets this way, so should be some pretty epic sunsets but it's pretty busy here home sweet home Is he super curious about everything? Oh yeah, he's super snippy. Louis, Louis, you wanna come in? Let's yes, go. Good boy. Up, up, up. I think somebody needs some food. Sit. Good boy. Oh, did you guys hear Sit. that? That's Sit. what we call a huffy puff. He does that all the time. Wait. He goes, <laughs> That's what he does when he's hangry. Wait. Good boy. Okay, good boy, yeah. He gets he gets huffy puppy puffy. He's a he's a, a quiet dog, but he <laughs> he makes funny little puffs like that. Louie. What's all this stuff? Okay, dear. What do you think? 
It's not bad, right? It's not bad. You know what's nice is we have these wind mountains out our window. Yeah. I don't know if you call those mountains or not. What do you call those? I'd call it a mountain, small mountain. That's a really great view. And, yeah, and our patio is a really nice sunset view. Yeah, and this is one of those places where... <gasps> Louie! Oh, the door is open. Oh. Louie, come. Good boy. This yeah. is one of those places Good boy. where... Left the door open. We almost lost our little Louie. All right, the setup begins. Now we have the big clear source ultra triple water filter. So this has to go somewhere, of course, and it kind of needs to not be packed in or tucked in. So um, just kind of slide that off to the side. Louis feet washing water bucket. But first, I'm gonna throw down the rock. Next, the table. Well, actually I gotta get the chairs out. Grill I keep in the pass through now. Onboard propane hookup. We're gonna be out here for maybe a week or so. So I think I'll use the hitch lock. So we don't always put the hitch lock on, but really nice feeling to have it on. They're kind of expensive, as I mentioned before, a couple hundred bucks, but worth it. Supposedly nice and secure. That's it, that's set up. Yep, that looks good. One other thing we haven't showed for quite a while is uh, the dry bag. This is what we use for garbage. We line it with a regular garbage bag. And then this basically is watertight, airtight. You just close it up like that. And no smells, no spills. We used to use this in the van all the time. And we even started doing something similar for Louie's little poop bag. So Louie has his own little bag, just like that. And again, no smells. Yeah, 10 minutes should be perfect for these little chicken thighs. They look delicious. First thing first. We gotta eat. I am so hungry. Yeah, travel days are always rough for everybody and we kind of rushed. We did some extra filming this morning that we didn't really prepare for. And it was a scramble. Yeah, so we didn't get to eat a, a second breakfast. This is my first time eating, which I don't normally do, ever. Smells really good. So what's the rest of the meal? Okay, so we have some air fryer veg, of course. And we have some brown rice and black beans. Hmm, looks pretty good. Air fryer for the win and the grill together. Can't beat it. It's, it's pretty quick just too. the most convenient thing. So I do a veggies in the air fryer and then I do rice in the microwave. Everything orchestrates at the same time. And then it's like a full blown, this is, this is what our meal number three and meal number four look like of the day. We normally have four meals a day. The first two are generally more breakfasty and the second two are more lunch and dinner. However, 
all of my formulas kind of look like this. Errands are different. Mm -hmm. I'm rambling a little bit because I'm so excited to be here and I'm starving and I'm ready to eat. Let's eat. Take a seat. <laughs> yeah, the view's not bad. I rate this uh, site as like a five or six so far. It usually grows on me. I'm always kind of like, eh, I don't know. It's not perfect. And then by day two or three, it's like, okay, I like it. Yeah, you are kind of like standoffish at snobbish yeah. snob well there's just a lot of people here and and now that we have a 50 foot rig we can't go back down the trails really i mean we don't want to spend hours trying to find the perfect spot so that can be frustrating that can be frustrating yes all right thank you for cooking you're welcome there's a lot to see a lot to do recently i've realized i like doing it all with you take my hand twirl me around hold me close don't ever put me down Every time I look at you, you're looking back at me, my dear When you are around, everything seems crystal So we are about one and a half miles from where we camped and the road kind of turns very narrow like this through a wash and basically you just, you know, if you have the right capable smaller rig, you can, you can go pretty far out here and be all by yourself. It's really pretty out here. It's very private and the cactuses are amazing out here. Yeah, super pretty. We're going on uh, Louie's big three mile walk in the morning and then we have 14 miles to do for our race and um, we're thinking about taking Louie off leash right now. We've been experimenting with that and he's done really good, right? He has done. He's done excellent a few times and he's done, he's lost his trust a couple of other times. So we just keep trying and keep trying to trust him because if we don't trust him, he'll never get there. Yeah. And right now, so Louie, you know, we walk him on leash, obviously uh -uh. he's been uh -huh. pulling worse and worse since he's been uh, a puppy so that blue thing is called a gentle leader and it basically uh, is a different way to um, you know help stop them from pulling louie leave it just like this is a front harness leash that also helps stop pulling so when he gets to a certain point it moves his whole chest um, but okay, after he hates this thing after a while he's definitely learned how to just pull right through that just like a regular harness so and then on the neck collar uh, he also pulls very hard on the neck collar so this gentle leader here goes around his uh, snout and to the bottom of his chin and so it moves his whole head and uh, it works really really well but of it course does. of course he hates it because it's it. around his nose because it, it prevents him from pulling so he hates it yeah so, so we're going to try? Yeah, let's try him off leash. Yeah. It. Yes, good boy. Wait. Wait. Okay, let's, let's go. go. Got a taste of it. We got a taste of the freedom. Look at him go. He does need some running exercise though. So we want to yeah. be able to let him, you know, do a dog thing and be free and yeah. have fun Louis. on the trail. Uh, uh, Louis. Oh. Let's go. He's going to have a little bit of energy. Yeah, he hasn't had some... Louie, good boy. Plus, we're in a new space, and he always... Every time we go to a new location, he gets really stimulated by smells. Yeah. And good so he, boy, come. Come. Get come here, Louie. Get your treats out. Come here, Louie. He does a good job of checking in. Louie, come. Yes, good, good boy. boy. Yes, good, good boy. boy. Good boy. Sit. Yes, good boy. Yeah. Okay, let's go. We just gotta keep keep practicing, keep training. Louis! Louis, come! Louis, come! Come on! Louis, come! Come! Louis, stop! Louis, come! Come on! Come on! 
Good boy, Louie. Good boy. Yes. Good boy. Sit. Good boy. You know what he reacted to that time was when I crouched down and. Yeah, he likes that. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Yeah, that good was like boy. His, his cue from afar. Yeah. Good boy, Louie. Yeah. He's really good at staying on trail as well. He loves good boy. loves trails. Good boy. Yum yum. Yeah. I'd like it if he stayed closer like that, 10, 15 feet, and then turned around. I don't really like it when he goes too far away. Yeah, that's just his pent up energy though. Yeah. Watch him stop and turn. Yes, Louie, good boy. That's a check-in. Good boy, Louie. Louie! Louie! Come! 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 Louie, come! Come! Louie, come! Yeah. Louie, let's go. Come on. Let's, come on. Get a treat. Good boy. When Louie was a young puppy, a trainer was at a dog park and she said, you have to trust your dog. You got to let him make some mistakes and you got to trust him. Well, even after doing this for so many years, we're still continuing to learn and get better. And I think the biggest thing is that every single place we go to is different. It's like a different scenario. Completely different. It really is. And then, you know, you kind of got to adjust to it. And um, I'll say, you know, some mistakes were made yesterday. I disagree. I don't think any mistakes were made. It was perfect. Oh, except for we should have gone left. Yeah. So now that we're in this bigger rig, um, it's a lot different just going down these unknown washy roads that you don't know what's gonna happen, so. We should be dropping our trailer and scouting. Yeah, that would but be But it a, sounds like a lot of work, doesn't that, it? That would be a big pain in the butt. We don't plan ahead that much time to do that. So a couple of months ago, we actually found a new home for our e-bikes that we've had for a while. The full size e-bikes that we had on the rack on the back. Some of you have noticed that uh, they're not on the back of the RV anymore. And that's because we sometimes like to switch it up a little bit and try some different things. The full size e-bikes were awesome for our lifestyle for a long time. Mm -hmm. And with the addition of the truck, and the trailer and the addition of Louie, it's kind of changed a little bit. So we're thinking about doing something smaller, something lighter, something more foldable, perhaps. I think with the hitch, okay, so because those bikes were so heavy and they were on the hitch, when they were on our trailer, we found ourselves using them less because we have our truck. When- And the, the puppy was a big thing when Louie was growing. Yeah. But when the bikes were on the van, same hitch, same weight, but the difference was we really needed those bikes then. So it wasn't a debate on do we bring them down or not. Like it was just, they came down in a motorhome. It was a lot different without a vehicle. Yes. And, and then and then it just changed in this setup. Yeah, and it's not like it's a huge deal and there's plenty of different scenarios that they really do work great. Um, but it would be kind of nice to have something really quick and easy to just, you know, grab out of the back of the truck or out of a slide or something like that, where you could just 
you know, within a matter of a minute, just be down the road and kind of searching for the right spot. Uh, even today, this is interesting, we saw a truck kind of driving around and I didn't think much about it besides I saw him on one side of the wash over here and then I saw him over here and then I and Aaron's like a spy, so he remembers every make and model of everything he ever sees, whether it's an RV or a driving vehicle, like he just puts it right in his brain. That's not true. I'm just observant. You know, you got to pay attention out in the wilderness. And anyways, he had a fifth wheel that he was towing down. So that's what he was doing. He actually dropped his fifth wheel at the beginning of this um, area and he was scouting on his truck. Which is smart. He had a big, big rig. Yeah, I just can't ever see us doing that with our travel trailer. I think that'd be a big pain in the butt. But I think like textbook wise, that's what you should be doing. Yes. So all in all, our first day here at Gunwash BLM has been pretty good. And we're excited to spend some more time here. And we are excited to go to the actual National Monument organ pipe cactus and mm -hmm. see a few of those fun things and let's not forget last night's sunset pretty magical out here it is a special time of night where we're making more of an effort to come walk during the sunsets because this is so calm out here and so enjoyable even the hum of the generator is not bad <laughs> It's actually making me happy. It's beautiful out here. <laughs> this ain't just a blip on the map. The show has been canceled and it's not coming back. Don't tell me to breathe easy. Don't tell me it'll be fine Cause we have rearranged the pieces 